ጤና ይስጥልኝ አሚር ኢብራሂም ነኝ ይህ C++ በአማርኛ የተሰኘው የቪዲዮ ቱቶሪያል ነው ክፍል 4 የC++ አመጣጥ ታሪክ በዚህ ክፍል 4 የቪዲዮ ቱቶሪያል በቅድሚያ ስለ C++ ፕሮግራሚንግ ቋንቋ አመጣጥ ታሪክ በዝርዝር ካየን በኋላ በቀጣይነት የC++ ፈጣሪ የሆነው ቢያርኔ ስትሮስትራፕ C++ን ለመፍጠር ምን እንዳነሳሳው የተናገረበትን አጭር ቪዲዮ እንከታተላለን አብራችሁን ቆዩ የC++ አመጣጥ ታሪክ የC++ ፕሮግራሚንግ ቋንቋ የተፈጠረው በአሜሪካን ሀገር AT&T በተባለ ካምፓኒ ቤል ላብራቶሪ ውስጥ ነው ይህን የፕሮግራሚንግ ቋንቋ የፈጠረው ሰው ቢያርኔ ስትሮስትራፕ ይባላል የC++ ፕሮግራሚንግ ቋንቋ የተሰራው የC ፕሮግራሚንግ ቋንቋን መሰረት ወይንም መነሻ አድርጎ ነው ለዚህም ነው ከሲ ፊደል በመቀጠል ሁለት የመደመር ምልክቶች የተቀመጡት ይህም የሚያሳየው C ፕሮግራሚንግ ቋንቋ ላይ የተጨመረ ነገር እንዳለ ነው የC ፕሮግራሚንግ ቋንቋ የተሰራው በ1972 ዴኒስ ሪቼ በተባለ ግለሰብ በአሜሪካን ሀገር AT&T ካምፓኒ ውስጥ በሚገኘው ቤል በተባለው ላብራቶሪ ውስጥ ነው ይህ የፕሮግራሚንግ ቋንቋ ለመጀመሪያ ጊዜ ወደ ተግባር እንዲገባ የተደረገው PDP 11 የሚል ስያሜ በተሰጠው በዚህ ላብ ውስጥ በሚገኝ ኮምፒውተር ነበር ዴኒስ ሪቼ የሲ ፕሮግራሚንግ ቋንቋን ሲሰራ BCPL እና B የተባሉ ቋንቋዎችን እንደመነሻነት ተጠቅሟል የሲ ፕሮግራሚንግ ቋንቋ ላይ የዳታ አይነትና ሌሎች መሰል ጠቃሚ ገጽታዎችን ማካተት ይችላል C++ የተጠነሰሰው በ1979 ቢያርኔ ስትሮስትራፕ የPHD ጥናታዊ ጽሁፉን እየሰራ ባለበት ወቅት ነው። በዚያን ወቅት ስትሮስትራፕ ሲሙላ የተባለውን ቋንቋ ይጠቀም ነበር። ሲሙላ በሚከተለው ኦብጀክት ላይ ያተኮረ ፕሮግራሚንግ አካሄድ በመሳብ ይህን የፕሮግራሚንግ አካሄድ ሶፍትዌር ማሳደግ ላይ ለመጠቀም ፍላጎት አደረበት። ነገር ግን ሲሙላ በጣም ቀርፋፋ ከመሆኑ የተነሳ ሶፍትዌር ማሳደግ ጥቅም ላይ ለማዋል አመቻል ነበር። ከዚህን ጊዜ በኋላ ነበር ስትሮስትራፕ ተግባር ላይ ያተኮሩ የፕሮግራሚንግ አካሄዶችን ኦብጀክት ላይ ካተኮሩ የፕሮግራሚንግ አካሄዶች ጋር በማቀናጀት አዲስ የፕሮግራሚንግ ቋንቋ ለመፍጠር ያሰበው። በ1983 ይህ አዲስ የተፈጠረ ቋንቋ C++ ተባለ። የC++ ፕሮግራሚንግ ቋንቋ ከሲ የፕሮግራሚንግ ቋንቋ በተለየ የሚከተሉትን አዳዲስ ገጽታዎች ተላብሷል። ክላስ ኢንሄሪታንስ ኢንላይኒንግ ዲፎልት ፈንክሽን አርጉመንት ፖሊሞርፊዝም ኢንካፕሱሌሽን እና ሌሎችም ስለነዚህ ገጽታዎች ምንነት በሌላ ቪዲዮ በዝርዝር እናያለን። ለመጀመሪያ ጊዜ C++ ለንግድ ጥቅም ላይ ያለው በ1985 ነበር። ከዚያን ጊዜ ጀምሮ እስካሁን ድረስ የC++ ፕሮግራሚንግ ቋንቋ እውቅ ተወዳጅ እና ተጽኖ ፈጣሪ የፕሮግራሚንግ ቋንቋ እንደሆነ ቀጥሏል። የC++ ፕሮግራሚንግ ቋንቋን መማር የሚያስፈልግበት ዋናውና ቀዳሚው ምክንያት C++ን የተማረሰው ሌሎች የፕሮግራሚንግ ቋንቋዎችን በቀላሉ መማር መቻሉ ነው። In the really old days people had to write their code directly to work on the hardware. They wrote load and store instructions to get stuff in and out of memory and they played about with bits and bytes and stuff. You could do pretty good work with that, but it was very specialized. Um then uh, they figured out that you could build languages fit for humans for specific areas. Like uh, they built Fortran for engineers and scientists and they built COBOL for um for businessmen and then in uh, the mid 60s a bunch of norwegians mostly uh Ole Johan Dahl and Christ Nygo uh thought why can't we get a language that sort of is, is fit for humans for all domains not just linear algebra and business uh and they built something called simula and that's where they introduced the class as the thing you have in the program to represent Uh, a concept in in your application world so if you're a mathematician the matrix will become a class if you're a businessman a personnel record might become a class in telecommunications uh, a dial buffer uh, might become a class you can represent just about anything 
as a class. And they went a little bit further and represented relationships between classes. Any hierarchical relationship could be done as a bunch of classes. So you could say that a, uh, a fire engine is a kind of a truck, which is a kind of a car, which is a kind of a vehicle, and organize things like that. This uh, became known as object-oriented programming, or also in, in some variants of it as data abstraction. And, and my idea was very simple, to take the ideas from Simula for general abstraction for the, for the benefit of sort of humans representing things so that humans could get it, uh, with the low level stuff, which at that time was uh, the best language for that was C, which was done at Bell Labs by, um, by Dennis Ritchie. And take those two ideas and bring them together so that you could do high level abstraction, but efficiently enough and close enough to the hardware for, for really demanding uh, computing tasks. And that was where I came in. And so C++ has classes like Simula, but they run as fast as C code. So uh, the combination becomes very useful. Yeah, I say, if I have to characterize C++'s strength, it comes from the ability to have abstractions and have them so efficient uh, that you can, can afford it in uh, infrastructure and you can access hardware directly as, as you often have to do with operating systems, with uh, real-time control, little things like cell phones. Um, and so the co combination is, gives something that is good for, for infrastructure in general. Um, another aspect that's necessary for infrastructure is stability. Um, when you build an infrastructure, it could be sort of the lowest level of IBM uh, mainframes, uh, talking to the, the hardware for the higher level of software, which is a place they use C++, or a fuel injector for a large um, uh, marine. Uh, diesel engine or, or a browser. It has to, to, to be stable for a decade or so because you can't afford to fiddle with the stuff all the time. You can't afford to rewrite it. I mean, taking one of those uh, ships into harbor costs a lot of money. And so you need a language that's not just good at what it's doing. You have to, to be able to rely on it being available uh, for decades on a variety of different hardwares and to be used by programmers over a decade or two at least. C++ is now about three decades old. And if that's not the case, you have to rewrite your code all the time. And that happens primarily with uh, experimental languages and with uh, proprietary commercial languages that change to, to finish fads, to, to, to meet fads. Uh, C++'s problem is the complexity partly because we haven't been able to clean it up there's still code written in the 80s that are running. And people don't like their running codes to break. Um, it could cost them millions or more. Adad this video, chillak aku yamasa wak yamalik tindi dar sa chu. Bakir mea kata challa un subscribe yamila un batan kata chana chubahala ke dawal malik kato anta chanu. Namasak gnallan.